Good morning and welcome to another in the JBDC Virtual Biz Zone webinar series. The Virtual Biz Zone is JBDC's platform for empowering our client group during these challenging times. We have been hosting this series of webinars since April 2020, where we invite entrepreneurs and experts in particular areas to share insights on the changing environment of business in the era of COVID-19. So far, we have conducted close to 100 webinars. Can you believe that? So we have looked at areas of research, marketing, managing business risks, um, business registration, the importance of re record keeping, and tips on how to pivot your business to ensure continued growth, developing new products or services, or entering entirely new markets. My name is Sansia Campbell, and I'm the Public Relations and Events Coordinator here at JBDC. This morning, we are focusing on creating a brand strategy. As small businesses, having a well-developed and defined brand can make or break your business. This morning's presentation is about creating a brand strategy that connects with your clients and results in success for your business. Our presenter this morning is no stranger to us. In fact, if you have been tuning into our Thursday presentations, Janine Fletcher-Taylor is not only a familiar voice, but a voice of knowledge and wisdom. For the benefit of those who may not know her though, Janine is the marketing and Ser marketing services manager here at JBDC. And just to tell you a little bit about her, she has a diploma in hospitality and tourism from tourism management from IMP, a diploma in business administration from UTEC a Bachelor of Science degree in Finance and Accounting from the University of London, and a postgraduate diploma in Development Management also from the University of London. In terms of her career, she, is, she has been involved in administration, but her largely her experience has been in sales and marketing. And for those of you who don't know, the Marketing Services Unit here at JBDC manages our Things Jamaican Retail Store which sells only authentic Jamaican made products across various categories, right? And the main mandate for the Things Jamaican Retail Store is to provide market access for local producers. And that is something that JBDC through Things Jamaican has been doing for the past 20 years. So for those persons who you know who would have wanted to be a part of this session, I just want to let you know that the session will be uploaded to our JBDC YouTube channel at JBDC Jamaica so they can log in at the end of the session if they missed today and subscribe and watch at any time. We will facilitate a question and answer segment immediately following Janine's presentation. However, we encourage you that if you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat because we don't want you to forget the questions and then we're not able to hear what, you, what your thoughts are. So drop the questions in the chat and we will manage them according, accordingly. So at this time, without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Janine and she will take you through the presentation, creating a brand strategy. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here with you this morning. And I, I have a few things that I want to see at the end of this session. I think the most important thing for me is to, impart information that you can quickly convert to some actions in your businesses and at the end of the day be able to know you know grow your income get persons to know where your brand is who your brand is and all of the questions that we want to be answering in this session today there are two things that i want persons to do as i present i want each participant to somewhat forget for a moment that they have an existing brand, if that is the case. And just to digest the information as if it was the first time you were now going to try to create your brand. At the end of the presentation, I want you to go back if you have existing brands and do some checks and balances to see 
where you are at now and what some what are some of the changes that you may need to make along the way. At the end of the day, we try here at JVDC to make sure that the information that we are sharing with you is of a particular nature that it is very practical that you can actually leave a webinar which is trying to cram something that person study years for years into two hours and so we know we won't get it right right away but at least we'll have some practical tools that we can take away and put in our businesses and that that for me if you listen but more importantly act at the end of it that would be the greatest outcome all right so let me go ahead and share my screen and let's get started all right so today's topic creating a brand strategy and um what are some of the things involved in doing that so let us first of all understand what we'll be talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about what a brand is, what is a brand strategy, four reasons why the brand strategy is important in a business, how to formulate a winning strategy, and how to get your culture to work for you. And by culture, we're talking about the business culture, whether it is a sole trader or you have a staff complement of over 100, 1,000 persons. There's always a culture that comes with the business. And then we can discuss what our next steps are to ensure that we are, in fact, implementing brand strategies in the business. All right, so let's go. So what is a brand? A brand is not a logo. It is a consistent attitude and a carefully managed experience that meets or surpasses consumer expectations. And I made sure to highlight some of the key terms. So the brand is not the logo. We will not be discussing today what colors to use, what shapes or, or icons. That's not what makes the brand. That's really just a way of representing the brand physically in terms of features, but that does not make the brand. The thing about consistency is what establishes the brand identity. So just saying that your brand stands for this or your brand is that is not going to establish a brand in the consumer's mind. What will establish the brand is a consistent experience and attitude that the consumer is interacting with. And they can now say, you know, every time I go to this company, they're just, there's just this thing about them. This is the kind of experience that I get most times. And even if someone else were to try to communicate that they have a different experience, then this is where they would now have a dialogue about what the brand means for them as consumers. And as business owners, you want to be able to have a sense of what your brand means in the minds and hearts of the consumers. And notice I said hearts because there's a lot of emotions that is involved in creating a brand and establishing a brand. The thing about experience, what is the consumer's experience whenever they interact with your brand? So this is not just when they go into the store to buy your product. It's also how does the ad look on TV when they see your brand? How does the staff behave when they when they come into the organization? There is something about the experience that generates that perception of the brand in the consumer's mind. And there's also something about the consumer's expectation. So having established a brand, there's going to be a, a, a psychological process that the consumer goes through that says, when I come to X, this is what I'm expecting. And this is what the consumer then uses to measure whether or not you are living up to the standard or you are not meeting their expectation. So this means that when we are gonna be talking about developing a brand strategy, interaction, connection, communication with your consumer base is going to be critical to your process, right? So we have cleared up that. What is a brand? And there are several definitions. We don't want to get into, 
intellectual exercise, but we want to be able to identify what are some of the key things we need to understand when we are thinking about what is a brand. It is not a logo, consistency in the attitude, managing the experience that the consumer has and understanding the expectations of the consumer. Make sure you get those four things down. All right, so what is a brand strategy? What are we talking about? In the simplest of terms, any strategy is constructed on six pillars. There are some questions that you need to answer about the particular type of strategy that you're creating. So a brand strategy is a plan for the brand management that answers these big questions. There are simple words, simple everyday words that we use, but they are big, big questions. And oftentimes when you start to sit down and try to answer these questions, you will start to appreciate just how complex these questions are. So what does the brand stand? And you're not in any particular order here. What is the brand? Who is the brand created for? Why was it created? How was it created? Where, where is it found? Where is it? When can I find it? So when you start to put these questions together and you have your answers, if you can't answer one of these questions, then you don't have a really strong, compelling strategy and we need to get to the bottom of that. So if you leave here with nothing else, remember that when you're creating a brand strategy, you must be able to answer six basic questions that have complexities involved. How and the five W's. Who, where, why, where, what, and when. You don't need to come up with any major template in Excel. Just put who, who am I targeting, and you start. No matter where you are in the business, if you have been dreaming about it and haven't started yet, if you have been in business for 20 years, you still need to be able to answer these questions and you need to review them because as time passes with a business, these answers may change given the environment that you're operating in. It involves setting goals and measures. It's measuring the success that your brand is having in the market. And notice I'm saying market. The brand success is not about how you, the owner of the brand, perceive it. It's about how the market perceives it and how connected is the market to your brand. And the only way you are going to be able to measure how you move, how much you need to move, where you stay, what's the position, is to be able to measure it. And we'll talk a little bit later about how we go about measuring it. But the key responses to that, do people know about it? Are people connecting with it? Do they like it? Do they not like it? Sometimes negative opinions can mean good things for brands and we can talk about that if we have time. How many persons are willing to spend money with that brand? How much are they willing to pay to acquire that, the products and services that that brand offers? Will they be willing to tell others about it based on the experience that they are having? These are some of the key measures that you would need to know and have an idea of that answer at all times going as you go along to determine just how your brand is performing in the marketplace. Your brand strategy must have a continuous commitment for excellence. It must always, you must always be seeking to improve once you get complacent with a brand, that's when your competitors come and swoop in. And interestingly, there are some texts and materials out there now that are making it clear that the product, while we understand that it's the product that the consumers are spending money on, that the product is not the most critical because the product might need to change. And with COVID, we would have seen that. What would have made the businesses that are still going survive, I dare to say, may just be that brand and how it is they would now transition with that brand to new and innovative products that are more relevant to the context of the current situation. So it's not the product that persons are necessarily connecting with. They make an association with the experience that they have with the product and they assign an opinion 
about the brand. And so you can always innovate and create, delete, add, subtract, minus, whatever you want to do. But if the brand is solid, then you get a lot of mileage on that in a sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But it, 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 it continues to infinity if you spend time to invest in that brand and not just focus on the product itself. It's a complete package. Understanding the qualities that define the brand. There are going to be some features that you may need to discuss with your team and so on that, that outlines what are the qualities that you want persons to associate with your brand. And the brand strategy has the ability to create communities and we would now be in the era of digital marketing and social media and the big buzzword that is being used when we talk about the impact of social media and digital marketing is what we call the tribe. You literally build a tribe with the brand because you are now linking like-minded persons in a community system that is being communicated on these different uh, um, social media platforms and creating a relationship through conversation, which has nothing to do with the product per se, but everything to do with your identity and how those consumers identify with your brand. So it helps you to create like-minded, a community of like-minded persons through an alignment of a particular ideal. So the brand must stand for something. When, when you go out there and you say, a, a, a good one that comes to mind right here and now, I didn't want to use examples because I want you to, to sort of think through your own businesses and apply this. But when we talk about the JMMB um, brand message, it's always going to be the heart. It's always going to be the love message. And so what they're saying in their communication is that love is the basis on which they deliver their products and services. It's quite unusual for a financial institution to do that because they're usually um, it is a, usually a different message about money management and all of that. When you as a consumer um, struggle with understanding your finances and some and a financial institution is talking about love, then you, you are now comforted that even though I have zero knowledge about finance, because their foundation is love, I can feel safe to come in without any knowledge and speak to them about my money. Understand the depth of meaning when companies create brands and when they have that, um, when they can define those qualities. All right, so why? Why do we need a brand strategy? Why, why is that necessary? I created my logo, it's pretty, it's very, very pretty. Um, people, you know, when you, when you say it, they'll remember it and it, it looks far better than my competitors. Yet, there are some key reasons why we need to have a brand. And unfortunately, in some sectors and industries locally, we still have products being made and being placed on the market without brands. That's, that's an amazing thing for me. I'm still not able to grasp it. I can't understand it because that's like me stepping out into the road without a name and still expecting persons to call me and for me to identify that somebody's trying to get my attention. Um, lady with the black and white shirt, that's what, that's what that is. When you put a product out there or a service out there that has no brand, that's what that is. So there are four reasons why you have to create a strategy around that brand. The first one is differentiation. The branding highlights the differences between a product or service as opposed to your competitors. Now we know the reason why we say the product is not the most um, stable thing to build the business on is because if I come up with a product, I am brilliant and I came up with a product. And even if I you know, did all the, the, the intellectual property protection, there's still somebody out there that can sit down and reverse engineer that and come up with a similar product that satisfies a similar need and compete with my product. So at the end of the day, the product 
by itself is not the only thing that you need. So it's gonna sometimes it's gonna be difficult for you to differentiate the product. A sauce is a sauce is a sauce. And a jerk seasoning, based on the context of jerk, has some specific ingredients that go into it. So after a while, when the tenth jerk seasoning is created, there's going to be very little differentiation between one versus the other, right? You could have sell it till you're weak. It is now going to depend on the brand and what the brand stands for and what assurances you're able to give that associates with your particular jerk seasoning that's going to be the thing that differentiates you from the competitor. So the first reason is the brand gives you room now to create differentiation statements as opposed to your competitors. The other reason for a brand strategy is emotion. Branding creates a bond between the brand and the consumer, and that builds emotional ties and loyalty. So we are saying here that the person that is going into the store or the person that is coming and purchasing your goods and services is not a robot. There is an emotion that they are carrying into your establishment. And when they interact with your brand, they will have an experience that stimulates a particular type of emotion. So when they come in, let's, let's use a, a fashion store. So the store sells beautiful clothing and it's, it's targeting women between the ages of 20 and 30 and everything in there is beautiful. And I step into the store and there is a fragrance in there. There's a mood in there. And I said, oh, this is comfortable. I feel like I could spend hours in here. And I then start interacting with the sales assistant. And the, the, the person is, is of a kind of personality that makes me feel comfortable. All these steps into the interaction with the brand is creating various types of emotions and we, what we want to be able to do is that when that person leaves and they said that they interacted with brand x the memory of those emotions that were elicited will is what's going to drive the way that they communicate to other persons to say yes man go and check out this brand because this is how i felt when i interacted with the brand so emotions you want to have an, a, a brand strategy that targets these emotions. So you have to determine now what kind of emotion do you want to elicit? Do you want to, people to feel happy when they interact with your brand? Do you want them to feel conscious when they interact with your brand? Do you want them to feel powerful? What sort of informa in emotion rather do you want to generate when people interact with your brand? So you have to come up with a strategy for that. The other reason for the strategy is to create added value. What do we mean by that? Branding increases value by adding emotional significance that exceeds rational value of the product or service. So when we, um, you know, marketing has gotten a really big hit for its ability to do this because in some school of thought, we would say this is somewhat of a manipulative strategy, but it's really not manipulation. It is really connecting with the, the whole value of what we spoke about earlier of emotion, because we know that the product has a particular value that it gives to the client that is using the product. But then when we talk about it exceeding the rational value, that means that I will go into the store, I will know that there is really no difference between this jam and that jam. I will know that rationally, but somehow I'm going to say, boy, now buy the grace jam, even though the grace jam is X amount more, because I feel like I'm cheating on the grace jam if I buy the other brand. There is an irrationality to that in some regard, but it's really coming from the emotional connection that we spoke about earlier. That's gonna drive the person to say, this is the reason. So you want to develop strategies in your brand branding guide 
that is going to add value, continuous value to the consumer such that it now transcends price. They are no longer making decisions just based on price. They are no longer making decisions just based on product. And this is where now you get brands being able to churn out new products that persons have never tried and they will close their eyes and buy it because there is no a trust that has been developed and a sort of guarantee that anytime I buy my, give me a shoes brand, um, anytime I buy my Nike sneakers, I know it will last for years. That is what they are talking about. That is, it's really, there's really no proof that says if I buy this other brand, I won't get the same value. But somehow the rationale leaves and the emotion takes over. So we want to create strategies that generates that. The other reason is the one that most of us focus on, which is the communication, um, the communication aspect. And this is also critical. So there are some particular things about the brand that you want to communicate or, the, or there are reasons why you would create a brand for communication purposes. The first one is you want to introduce something new. You want to introduce a new organization, a new product, or a new service. So when you're thinking about coming into the marketplace, who are you? Who are you? So you, this is a reason that you want to communicate who you are in your strategy. That's the reason why. So you need to also determine, you know, what is the purpose of the strategy? What you want to achieve? And then it will tell you which of these four um, areas you need to pin down with your strategy. So we want to introduce a new organization, a new product or a new service, or we may want to rebuild lost reputation. So we use the brand to communicate. So we may have a product in the market and something goes wrong with the product. And you start seeing these brands talking about they care and how many years they have been in the market and how many families have, have benefited from. So, so they are using the brand and taking the attention away from the particular product that has caused the issue and say, no matter what, our brand stands for this and we commit to doing X, Y, Z. So you may want to create a communication strategy around the brand to rebuild a lost reputation. This um, matter of brand reputation is something that is very, very difficult to undo. So if you're in your early stages, you still have a chance. People don't know about you. Thank, thank God for that because it gives you the ability to go on and, and shift it up. But if there is an already established perception and opinion about your brand and it's not working for you it's not it's not a positive perception oftentimes what you have to do is go back to the joint board and create a new brand and create a new strategy around that to rebuild some sort of um, um change the perception that they may have what other reason may you want to communicate come up with a strategy to communicate with a brand it is used to consolidate a group so um, I'll use Grace Kennedy again. We knew Grace Kennedy for the, the good food people, but then they transitioned into banking and other types of businesses. Nobody knew, I think brand is First Global. Nobody knew First Global. So what Grace Kennedy would have done is that it would have leveraged on its reputation as Grace Kennedy to say that the same level of integrity and reputation and all of that that is associated with that brand called Grace is now transcending to First Global. So the type of transition that First Global would have made coming into the market would be different from an obscure brand that has no association to unite with anything else. So you may want to come up with a strategy to say the parent brand is still here, but we have created this new brand for this reason, but it's still a part or associated with this group. So that's one. You may want to use um, a branding strategy to, to bring awareness to new ownership and to allay fears because sometimes, um, especially when you think about companies that may be going on the stock market or companies that may have merged with other entities, 
you know, your consumers may get uncertain about whether or not they will be receiving the same level of quality and assurance that they would have established with the old brand. So what companies, what, they, what the, the purchasing company may want to do is to not lose those customers that they old com the company that they are buying, they would have had a, a following or a consumer base. And they want to now transition those customers over to the new company. They are, they are gonna have to respect the fact that there was a relationship with the old brand and try to assure those persons coming over into the new company that they will get the same or even a better experience with the new ownership. So that might be another reason why you may come up with brand strategy. You may want to change your position in the market. So you may want to, you may have come out to say, boy, you're the poor people brand, or you're affordable, you're an affordable brand, or you're an expensive brand, whichever. And you find that you may not be having as much traction with that strategy, the way you're positioning in the market. So you may decide that you want to change your positioning strategy and come up with a new brand strategy to, to, to shift that perception. You may also, and this one I found, I left it for last because I think it's very important for companies, whether you are um, two or five or a hundred employees, you may use brand strategy to attract and retain talent, staff, good staff. You may use it to attract and retain investors. You may use it to attract and retain customers. So your branding strategy is not just geared at attracting customers. It is also effective at attracting talent and employees to your organization where you can brag that your team, your company based on your ethos and the values that you have attracts the best employees. And when consumers see that and hear that, then they start to form opinions about the company itself. Nothing to do with the product, just maybe the way they treat their employees. And when the employees go out there, they're you know, brand ambassadors to say, boy, this company, I love working here and so on and so forth. So you may use your strategy so now the strategy and the communication strategy would now be talking about how people feel being a part of the team, you know, or how can you assure investors that your company is a, is a viable or a good company to invest in. So who would have thought that you would have used branding to attract investors? And that's why when we started, I made sure to point out that. Branding strategy is not a logo. It's an entire business process that is used to come up with a particular kind of outcome. So here we are saying that you may come up with a branding strategy to, in, to attract investors, right? So everything is important. Now we're gonna play a game of eights today in some of the, the, the areas that we are covering. I made sure not to go over eight things. So just remember the number eight. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about are the ingredients for a winning strategy. First one, how, you need to answer this question. How does the brand improve the world? Wow, that's a big one. But it's the but it's the it's the main reason why you go into business. You must have a purpose. What what are you trying to solve in this world? I just and it, no, it can't. <laughs> Santa over there whisper with us. I try and make our money. No, no. So you said to the consumer, "Boy, me just I try and make our money out for you. You have money, me have product. Make we talk. No, no. My product is." Uh, needed to help young mothers who are struggling to deal with going into parenting. You know, it, you must have a purpose. What, how is the brand going to improve the world? And that now transcends what you sell. And that is why you have a number of companies coming up now with their foundations, because 
the original context of their business was really a transactional one. And as we evolved as a society and so on, persons started to ask, so what you for? What you stand for other than to take my money, right? And so they would have created foundations to now look at having a social impact or having a kind of impact because they have now been created. So we know, for example, that Apple, we, Apple, no matter if we love it or we hate them, they would have created significant impact in the world of technology, such, such that we can now sit here, the worlds apart from each other, how much in the rooms and how many persons in their in the comfort of their own spaces being able to interact with each other because somebody came up with a brand, had a purpose, and went out to create a solution for that. So you must have a purpose. And the, and, the, and the benefit to be derived doesn't have to be a physical benefit. It can be an emotional benefit, an intellectual benefit, or a physical benefit, right? So the next thing is, what is the brand's ambition? And the answer to that is your vision. So what, when you, when you and this is something that I, I take, I, I have a lot of um, issues with this. When you talk about micro firms, persons who are just coming out and they are looking at how small they are. They're just, I am just, once you say I am just anything, then your growth part will only be just this. No matter where you start, you must sit down and imagine where you see yourself. So if you are saying, boy, I want to be in Russia, I want to be in France, I want to be in 10 years, I want my company to be exporting to France, then where you start and how you start to build that vision it's, it's built on that vision. You, you have to now say, okay, the look, the feel, the, the way we communicate, the way we do business. If, you, if you're poor and bossy, so you might have the one suit as the CEO, but no matter what, you turn up in your suit. The reason for that is because you have a vision that one day that will be required of you to have that image. So you start where you are at, but it's with a view that that, vision is what you're trying to achieve. So the brand vision is an ambition for the future, whether that future is three years, five years, and it's good to determine how many years, because then you challenge yourself to get there within a, time, a specific time frame. And it's the duty of the brand champion, maybe the owner or the CEO or the managing director to communicate this picture constantly. So when you have your staff meetings, you may just be, you may just have five customers. You say to them, we are working towards that hundredth customer. And you consistently and persistently share this vision with not just the staff, but all stakeholders, your board, your consumers, everybody. So even when you come up with a product that has a little a packaging that is quite simple and you're communicating with your, with your consumers that you see this product this way in a number of years, they will transition with you. They'll be willing to start. They'll be willing to give you inputs to getting you to that vision. So you have to have a vision when you're creating a brand strategy. Have to see yourself where you see yourself five, 10 years from now. The next ingredient is what does the brand stand for? the brand values, the qualities, the principles of its founding fathers, the, the persons who create the organization, the values and their defined behaviors, the guidelines for the brand and the moral compass on which it stands. And then we have to now ensure that when we are recruiting persons to the organization, that there is a match with those values. So if you say, when you come here, we have an energy that makes our customers leave with a smile on their face, and then you're recruiting and there's this person in the interview that no matter what you can get a smile from them and they're very, nothing is wrong with them. It's just that they, 
the, the values and the, and the kind of experience that you want will not be coming from that particular person. When you're looking to train people, you have to, you have to ensure the orientation process is able to communicate what are the values that this brand stands for. That way, they will understand the boundaries in which they can innovate. So there, if there's innovation, the innovation is taking place and they are not killing animals to, to get the product because the company stands for using, not using animals as testing things. So that's why you see those statements being made on some products. It's a way for, the, for them to communicate what values the organization stands for and the boundaries within which they operate. And it demonstrates how they live when the, when these behaviors are repeated intuitively they become culture and when we are finished with this slide we'll talk about culture so in practicing and ensuring that we are constantly aligning with these values over time it becomes a culture a way of life for this brand so um, just I, I won't name the brands, but just think about them and try to imagine why you automatically associate a particular word or opinion with those brands. It's because there's something that they are communicating about their values in there. And there's something about your personal values that connects with that and makes you able to communicate with them. Right? So you say, boy, I like this brand because it stands for this and I stand for it as well. The next thing that we will need is how is the brand going to achieve this vision? So we, 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 we create this scenario in our head and we create the brand, but how are you going to do it? And that comes out in your mission statement. So your mission statement is like a manifesto that combines the purpose the vision and the value, the values. So your mission statement now must indicate these three components and it must be a declaration about what your intention is. And that declaration is being made to your various stakeholders, right? So what is it that you are declaring about the brand to your stakeholders? What are you saying to them? That is what the mission statement must, must entail. Who you are, what you stand for, and what you want to achieve. And we are still talking about the brand. In some instances, the, what, the, the, the strategy and the mission statement for the brand transcends to the organization, but we're talking about the, the brand, the person called the brand in the organization. What does it stand for? What is its mission? What is its intent? Why was it created? Now, the next ingredient is, why do I need the brand? What is a value proposition, right? So what is your unique selling position such that this brand with this name, you alone have this name, you are this single person in the whole entire world. What is unique about you that nobody else has? So your unique selling proposition must be the hardest thing to emulate. It must be compelling. It must be a compelling reason to believe in the brand. And the proposition must not be restricted to physical attributes. It must, it must convey the unique attitude and culture of the brand. So I hope that is clear. It, it is something that you say and whatever it is, I am doing to interact with this brand, it is consistently what happens with me, the consumer. What do you stand for? What's your unique selling proposition? Nobody else offers this, even though they offer the same products and services, but they don't offer it with this. Find that um, compelling reason for me to believe in your brand. The next thing you need is where is the brand in relation to its competitors? So it's now going to be, there are several brands out there that have similar products and services, but where is your position? I don't know why I hear all your position, all your position. 
in the marketplace, right? Who are your position? But first you have to know what that position is. Where in the market are you seeking to stand and establish your brand, right? It is physical, emotional. It's gonna be, it's gonna be addressing the consumer's consideration relative to the market, what the competitors are offering. So when the consumer is sitting and seeking to make a decision, then it means that they are looking at these positioning statements that they connect with and then saying, okay, according to my physical, emotional or financial needs, I, I fit into that, I connect with that brand. So if it's a luxury brand, and that's the positioning, you're positioning as a luxury brand going after persons with a particular um, disposable income, then that person must be able to recognize themselves in the strategy and the messaging that you're using. And we move from coming up with that positioning to coming up with what the brand what is what are the characteristics of the brand that meets that position so you can't say i'm a luxury brand you can't go out there and say well my positioning is that i'm a luxury brand and the luxury customer come out and say what is that i don't connect with that that does not say luxury to me so you can't just say it you have to look the part and the persons that you are targeting need to be able to recognize that they are one of you or you are one of them. And that's when we start going into the personality of the brand. You have to create a personality that the brand is seeking to attract. And in doing so, you may need to get, if we're not talking about, yes, there are demographics and things like that, but I will challenge you as participants to just imagine the ideal consumer, what that ideal consumer looks like. How do they behave? Is it a man? Is it a woman? So if it's a male, then that's what's going to now go into looking at the logo. So do the, the answer to some of these questions are speaking now to the physicality of the brand. What needs to be in it so that when persons see it, they recognize themselves as being the target. So you have to create what is called a brand persona that describes the person, that describes how they behave, what are, what is a, what's a typical activity in a day? What, what is this person looking like? How do they behave? What attracts them? What's, what's a sort of an emotion that gets them to buy? These are some of the questions that you will need to answer when you're creating the strategy and when you get to this, um, this thing about personality, you really need to sit and get into the psychology of that, right? And last but not least, number eight is who is interested in your brand? Who is the audience? So you have the persona and you have the audience. And the audience is never, it has never been really easy to gain insight into your audience like it is now persons are so willing to provide you with feedback, right? They give you insights about your brand, how it's performing. They will tell you they don't like it, they like it. They don't feel what they feel, what they don't feel by just observing and monitoring social media, you can do that. You have to be brave and you, know? you have to be brave and willing to take the feedback and speak to the market, speak to them and get feedback. So the strategy then is in response to the feedback that they are providing. And when that happens, when consumers see that you are actually engaged with their feedback, then they will now look at the emotional part of it because they feel that you care about what they have to say and you have implemented some suggestion that they are making. And so the audience is important. Use the feedback, qualitative, quantitative, whatever it is, and continuously improve on the brand strategy as it relates to you, what your audience, what the relationship with that audience is saying. All right? So those are eight winning ingredients to developing the brand strategy. When you are thinking about how you're going to come out, you are going to talk about the purpose, vision, the values, mission statement, 
value proposition, how you're going to position yourself in the market, what is the personality of the brand and people that you're trying to attract, and who are they and how are you going to communicate with them. So we spoke up earlier that over time, with the consistent interaction and consistency in the experience and the, and the strategies. Once you create the strategy, you, know, you have to stay true to it and be consistent, consistently deliver the products and services in that way. If you start changing, it's like, it's like um, dating a person with multiple personalities. You know, it's, it's confusing to the consumer. You have to be consistent in how you deliver and how you you deliver that strategy consistently do it over time until it becomes now a culture a way of life because culture can consume strategy that's a quote it can consume so you come up with everything right on paper but in reality nobody is implementing or the implementation or the execution is not aligned to what you are saying you come out there and you say, we care. And a customer comes in and is having a difficulty and you have no, you, you don't pay the customer any mind. The culture will kill the strategy. So now you have to now create, you have to actually bring it into action. Not just write it down, but bring it into action. Owners get on the ground floor, do it, do what you're saying to the staff. Ensure that when the customers come in, they actually are experiencing what you are saying in their ads and your, you know, your social media and all of that. Ensure that your culture is aligned with the strategy. Get your team involved and committed to the brand strategy. So that means that you have to communicate it. You can't, it's, it can't, it's not a high level thing that you create up the top there and nobody that is interfacing with the customer knows. These things that I'm talking about sound like customer service, don't it? But there are actually things that you can deliberately implement and install to create a brand strategy. A strong culture can be a brand's most solid asset. It attracts good customers and it attracts good employees, right? So the culture, it's somewhat, it's intangible, but it's something that consistently happens, something that consistently occurs. There's a mood to it, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of like why when we try to define brand Jamaica, it's so difficult to really capture it into one precise sentence. But all we know is that when election finish in US and we hear Shaka Dimas and Pliers, all Jamaicans feel like, yeah, we did it, right? What is that intangible thing? It's, it's that thing that we are so cool and we are so, you know, airy. That's how the word airy evolved because there's a particular culture that is consistently experienced within that context. And uh, our, what is our, when we talk about culture, what is it that we are talking about? Culture equals employee attitudes, employee and employer attitudes, the beliefs and the values. So how are we going to use culture now in the brand strategy? We're going to go to number eight again. We're going to play a game of eight again. So eight key cultural elements. What is the story behind the brand? People are inquisitive and they want to know how it all started. Have a story. Talk about the founding fathers. Do you know the story behind the brand, how it began and who its key figures are? are what influenced you to create a brand why is it blue why is it red you know what is the significance of that icon that you're using what is the significance of the words that you're using what is your story and anybody who know me knows i want to hear the story because the story drives the strategy it drives the reason why you are doing it it drives everything and sometimes some of those stories may be founded in painful situations so you may want to say boy that was my past i don't want to yeah and then we see now a, a, 
a sort of proliferation and sort of exploitation on that. So we have to be careful now that everybody isn't telling, boy, I was a poor, we just eat crackers and drink water. If that wasn't the case, that's not the case. So find the compelling elements of your story that will, will sort of give a sense of why we are here, why this brand was created. Tell the truth because people will, will, will be able to uncover things that you are saying and they, they are going to investigate it and they are going to connect with it. And it can be very disheartening if what they connect with is not so. So what is the story behind the brand? It's a powerful asset and it can provide inspiration to tackle issues currently that currently exist. It fuels your marketing campaigns and it fuels your content when we talk about digital marketing. That story, if, 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 if what drove you to go into business was something that had to do with um, abandoned children and you decided to go into creating affordable housing because of abandoned children, then your content now may not have anything to do with housing per se, but may have to do with abandoned children. And in doing so, then people start to understand what the, how the dots connect and how you went into housing. And by virtue of that now, have a different attitude when seeking to do a transaction with you. So story. What are the beliefs and inspiration and aspirations that underpin the brand values? So what are the beliefs and aspirations that underpin the brand values? The ethos is a realization that the brand's purpose, vision, it, it, is, it is bringing the purpose, the vision and the values to life so that you don't even have to say it. Just by virtue of interacting with you, I will be able to say, you know, this is, it seems, it seems as if this is what this brand stands for. To, together, these aspects of the brand strategy shape a set of principles that inform social responsibility. Right? So it's speaking to how you affect the world. Okay. How does the brand express its personality through language? vocabulary and tone of voice. Um, again, I don't want to use examples right away because it's, it can distort how you perceive yours. You know, you try to imitate. I don't want you to be imitating anything. I want you to really sit down and ask yourself, what is truly the personality of your brand? How does it speak? Does it speak patois? Does it speak standard English? Is it loud? Is it quiet? Is it soothing? Is it exciting? It's, it's not, you know, it's a person, really. So how does the brand express its personality? The, and if you have questions on that, we can talk about that some more because it's, it's sort of difficult to explain. You have to really connect with the emotions of it. You have to get deep into it and, and create a persona for your brand. The choice of words, the nuances, how you communicate it, the attitude, the identity, how the logo is presented, the language that the brand uses. The language of the brand can be spread by word of mouth and have the potential to enter into everyday use. And we have seen that. So we know that um, Pampers is, is, is all diapers. That's an example of how the language, I don't think there was a word called Pampers. It's not like a, it's not like a word, is it? It's not that English, it's not in the dictionary as something, it's a brand, but it has somehow morphed into and integrated into the English language. When you see that happening, then that's, that's a powerful um, output of a brand strategy, such that whenever you think about babies and diapers, you're, 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 you're confused and saying pampers, right? So the language can, be, can become such that it is infused in the normal way we speak in everyday life. Um, who are the people that bring the brand to life and what are their qualities. So an organization is only as good as its people. 
what qualities define the brand ambassadors and we know we are in the era of influencers now so um when if you are thinking of using influencers as part of your brand strategy be sure that the influencer you're seeking to use is aligned with the values and principles and and what you want to communicate and when persons um connect with a brand or connect with the influencer now they're associating the brand with a particular thing so you want to be able to know um determine who the brand ambassadors are how they align to the to the message that you are trying to send and uh, how they are going to bring that brand to life right what are the qualities that define this person and what are the qualities that define the brand who is going to, who are you going to what are you going to use so some persons for example may use animation and create a character as a part of the strategy because maybe there isn't a they don't want to use a real person because you know it's a human being and may pose risk so they may create a character that now defines or, or exemplifies these qualities and then create content that suggests these qualities and communicate these qualities. So that's a kind of uh, an example of how, how what I'm saying feeds into strategy, right? The next cultural ingredient is leadership and how does leadership inspire colleagues and stakeholders? Your, it's, like, it's like a household, there's a household with a family and whoever is perceived as the head of the family, have, they have a particular um, stature or they have a particular reputation. And as children, when we go out into the public sphere and we are behaving contrary to that, there is no distortion and say, so how come, how come you're so and such child and you're behaving like that? So it would be the same thing with a group of brands. If you have a parent brand and, and there's one particular company that's not acting according to the, the ethos, they're going to say, well, something is happening. The company is changing. Its culture is changing. So the leadership, whatever is identified by the market as leadership. So that's why you have situations where you may have scandals and you're, you now have to call in your communications person to, to fix it because there is there is an association between the the leader who is probably embroiled in the scandal and then all of a sudden the product on the shelf starts to be perceived in the same so the leader is a criminal all of a sudden you go into spark if you start to perceive the product as a as some form of injustice if you were to buy this product i think that happened recently when there was the black lives Mo black lives movement and um i'm not quite remembering the, the the luxury fashion brand now but that that is what happened with that brand and um black persons you know were being challenged not to purchase products from this brand because the leadership was identified as a racist so you cannot um divorce certain things from the brand it's built into the brand strategy so sometimes you have to call in the leadership and fix them and and say well you are acting in, you need to act in accordance with the message because it has the ability to impact the revenues and the, and the way consumers are interacting so all these elements of culture they are very important right the next thing is what unique customs traditions anniversaries does does the brand observe so these are this is another cultural element that goes into the brand strategy so when you think about um uh i know that there's a there's a client that prays whenever you make a purchase with her um within her store that is what we would call now you will develop in a custom or a tradition or they may say every time you you make a purchase we give you a, a card i think um i was speaking to somebody recently and they, they were telling me that at their grocery shop i think it's walmart or so on whenever you purchase your groceries you get a goodie bag and and no matter what they put in the goodie bag even if it's things that they don't really need they expect to get the goodie bag because somehow not getting the goodie bag means that i have been denied my 
recognition as your, your longstanding customer. So you can create strategies that develop these customs and these traditions and these practices that only you do. And by doing that, you now come up with a branding strategy that persons associate with these customs and these practices, right? And remember that we are talking about building strategies, so we have to come up with, with ways now to make that real. What distinctive sensory experiences are special to the brand? Um, so when you think about the brand, what happens to your mood? What, how are you, how do you feel? You know, when you think about the brand, what is that? What are the senses? So, you know, you have the eyes, the ears, you know, you, your strategy must target these sensory organs, including now the emotion. So we're talking about the eyes. What do they see? How does the product look? How does the product smell? How does it taste? How does, what, how, when you touch it, how do you feel? What sort of emotion do you generate? Your brand strategy must zero in on what you want to, to the consumer to feel, what's the sensory response you want the consumers to have when they interact with your brand. Is the physical manifestation of the brand aligned with its values? So, I spoke about that earlier in terms of customer service. So if you're if if you are the brand manager or you are the person that's coming up with the brand strategy and you come up with this brand strategy, you are now going to be compelled to communicate that with your customer service team that look, every time a anytime a customer comes in the store, uh, within five seconds of them coming in the store, they must they must have um, been greeted. That's a strategy that speaks to the physical manifestation of when you say, we care about every single customer. Every single customer is important to us. When the customer comes in, they must feel that it must connect or else you are gonna have distortions. So this is how granular you, I, I, don't, I don't think that when persons um, think about branding, we, we spend a lot of attention on the way the brand looks or um, you know, what it's saying and, and what, what the words are and so on. But the physical manifestation of the, the elements that we're speaking about must also be evident, All right? So the next steps, again, we're playing game of eights. I, I don't know, I was feeling very cute when I came up with the game of eights thing. Start with a big idea. What's the vision? Start with your big idea never never shrink you can come up with a huge a big idea and then work your way down into a doable action step by step but you have your eye on the prize the big idea right what do you want to create with this brand what what impact do you want to create in the world the world stage with this brand and how is that going to shape the future of the vision Identify your values and really stand for them. So even though you, you can't, I mean, I notice I use the word identify. There is a way that we say this is our values because it sounds good. But if that's not what you identify with, it's going to be very difficult for you to manifest it. Position your brand for success. It's not, a, it's not an easy one to think. You need to work at it. You need to create it. You need to position it for success. Work on the personal, your personality and the personality of the brand. Create brand ambassadors with employer branding. And by employer branding, we are just really saying that the persons who are engaged in the delivery of the goods and services must embody the message of the brand. Identif brand identity is a visible business strategy. So even though if, if as a marketer, I will sit back and I will look at what is taking place with a particular brand in the marketplace and I'll be able to identify exactly what they are doing, what they are trying to achieve with a campaign, with a statement, with a look, with a change. I can identify it. 
it's the same way sometimes as consumers, we are subliminally connecting with it without even recognizing it. So it's not something that you have to come out and say, we are the world or we are this, we are that. It's supposed to be visible in the very experience that you are having. And the brand identity then becomes the, the thing that I connect with. And review your brand touch points. You have to constantly review the market space and you may need to revamp the message. You may need to rebrand. You may need to rebrand. So as part of your business strategy, understand that your brand is a particular segment of your business strategy that needs critical attention. I think that's essentially what I wanted to communicate with this webinar, that as you think about how to develop your business, as you think about how to grow it and all of that, understand that when you get into the marketplace, it is the brand that the consumer is interacting with and not just your product or service. They are interacting with a brand and you can transcend your products and services once you put the work into the brand. All right, that's it, so we have Wow, what a presentation. Um, you know, you, when you go into these presentations where <laughs> it's so good that you, you, I was just so into it a while ago, I can't believe it's over. Anyway, you know, the, the presentation this morning, Janine, has helped me to identify why it is that I choose to buy one product over another because it named so and so and so. And the reality is that this is how consumers buy. You buy what you use, you buy what you, you're connected to and stuff like that. So I want to thank you for the presentation that you have done this morning. It has, I'm sure it has helped many of our attendees this morning to distinguish between what a brand is versus what their logo is. Because a brand is not a logo based on the breakdown that you have given us this morning a brand could never stand in the place of a logo no day no time no how um just to remind everyone that you can type your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you have a question um or was it as clear as mud as it has been for me because this presentation this morning, I wrote down a couple of things though, Janine. I wanted to ask you about a long lasting brand versus a household name. How do you differentiate between the both of them? I was thinking about Colgate in particular. I remember one time, and I don't want to call the other brand that I bought because I don't want anybody to feel anyway, but I went into the supermarket, I didn't look what I was doing, and I grabbed another toothpaste, different from a regular Colgate when we used to from my two. <laughs> the toothpaste tastes bad. <laughs> so I understood then why I always buy Colgate, but can you explain the difference between a, a well-established brand versus what we would we would call a household name. Something where you just come and you see and everybody do it, so you just do it as well. So immediately I'm thinking that a long lasting brand, the long lasting brand has to do with, um, has to do with the name and the number of years that it has been in, in the market and the fact that it is still recognizable. Mm -hmm. The household thing now is when we spoke earlier about the brand now merging into the language of society and becoming embedded in our everyday life, such that when you think about a particular thing, you are calling the brand as if it's that thing, as if it's in the dictionary and it has a meaning. So like fab. Fab, they have... <laughs> um, Campers, as I said, yeah. Have, um, what's, what's the name of that baby thing that we used to wash our clothes? Well, uh, every Jamaican baby clothes get washed with, with this thing. Saflan, oh, Saflan, right? No, yeah. really, when they got to the whole. So when it when it named Saflan or not a Saflan, right? Yeah, once right, it has that right. Blue look and it smells so, and so it's Saflan. So when they got to the wholesale, they said, "Sell me a Saflan." 
Yeah. It's not really the bad. Arcutex. That is what you call the whole soul thing. And we are saying that that's the ultimate achievement. Right. Because it transcends generations. It transcends generations. So your children and your children's children will come and ask for that thing. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need to, you do, all you need to do is ensure that you are relevant. You are still relevant. But the, the mm -hmm. long-term thing, now I'm thinking about Milo. So they would have invested. Number one. In, yeah, man. <laughs> but it's not a whole soul. Because you still have next quick, you still have malt, uh, malt, what is it? Or Harlix. You still have all of those things. Yeah, yeah you but... still, still there. So you're not going to say, um, Mix me some Milo. When you talk about mix me some Milo, you know for sure is Milo you're talking about. And and when when you mention Milo, one of the things that I must note, well, I am a I'm an avid Milo buyer. Everybody in the world will know me know say any way I'm gonna carry my Milo because I've been drinking Milo from day one. But Milo has maintained its same those same brand traits from day one. It's still in a green package. They change the imagery every now and again. They will change their, um, what do you call it, the tagline, because right now they are the food drink of champions. So if you want to feel like a champion, your drink is Milo. You know what I mean? So while it has maintained the packaging, the traits, the characteristics, the look of all the years, they have still been able to change some little elements here and there but maintain what is milo because people still throw milo in at them and I mix it with milk and drink it mm -hmm. or just eat the salsa dry milo as it because is there's a way now so we spoke about the customs and the tradition right you know? so when we start when i tell my kids that i just you know way to mix the milo so that the grain come at the top and it's not what we have to teach it mm -hmm. No, Milo, Milo never gets involved in that. It's like condensed milk and bread. I mean, you're bringing me so far back with some of these brands. I remember when I was growing up, a Betty, send me a tin of Betty milk. And even though Nestle was there, but the concept of condensed milk and bread. All right, let me not go back to my child. Let me, let me stay here. All right, so there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, Dr. Colette Smith is saying, excellent presentation, thank you. What are the implications for an organization or business that establishes a distinct brand identity? Example, vision of love, then over time expands and loses the essence of its identity. So that, that's the reason why we're having this discussion, because the strategy, the business strategy must always consider the branding strategy. Right. It's something that you have to revisit constantly, like in different periods. So you have um, annually, and that determines your quarterly, your monthly, your daily things. Mm -hmm. But every single year, you have to go back to the strategy. You have to also look at the relevance within the context of the... Continue, continue. Mm -hmm. You have to think about the relevance. So... One or two things. Unmute your mic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nobody heard anything I said. Okay. Thanks, Brenda. Sorry about that, guys. So let me go back. So you have to think about the context and the relevance of the original message, the original identity that you created. And we, I was saying earlier that strategy must be reviewed frequently. In an, in an annual context, you come up with the strategy and you determine how you're going to implement. And then every year you do the same thing. Now, the values, it, it doesn't change, but the way you communicate it can change so that it's, it's maintaining its relevance. Now, when you have a company expanding, then this is where we talked about the parent brand, the original values that were established and ensuring that there's even a training process to ensure that you are maintaining it. So it, the expansion is not necessarily what uh, results in the values being lost or results in the identity being lost. It's the fact that there isn't an 
intentional strategy in place to ensure that there is continuously reminding persons, continuously establishing it, continuously committing to what we say we stand for. And that's the reason why we're having this discussion today, because we recognize that a lot of businesses create brands, very good brands, and they come up with a good campaign to launch and they're in the market and then they forget that this, there needs to be a continuous updating of the strategies to, to sustain it because the brand identity is built over time of consistent output. So you have to be the deliberate. It's like you trying to create an image for yourself. You have to be deliberate in how you dress up in the morning. You have to be deliberate in how you, how you articulate. You have to be deliberate. But there are instances, however, where the brand identity becomes irrelevant or is not connecting with the context of the day. So when we talked about banks, and we said um, a lot of banks are built on the trust and the money management skills, and this is what they communicate. What we see now is a trend where they are going into the we care, and, they, and it's more than just your money. We care about you. We want to make your dreams come true. Your dreams come true. It's because the, as financial institutions, they would have been perceived as impersonal. And so there is no agenda balance that is coming into the sector to include that human thing. So their, you know, their identity may need to be revised to include this trend, right? So the brand identity is something that, while it is something that is perceived from the market's end, it is something that is deliberately implemented from the company end and they have mm -hmm. to constantly come up with strategies to do that. When you said that a while ago, it reminded me of how or why some brands die a natural death. You will be in the marketplace and then you'll remember, oh, this, this thing was so popular back in the day. What happened? And it's not because the product is no longer good. It is because they have not changed their strategy to fit into what is happening right now. And as you rightly said, where the banks in particular are concerned, I can immediately think of maybe, well, this is my perception of an NCB, the nation builders. That is what they're always going towards. I want to build a nation. I want to be the nation's purpose. bank. Right, and that is their purpose. So however I am going to build the nation's bank, be, be, the, be the nation's builder, this is how I am going to get involved in corporate giving. I'm going to do scholarships for students, all of those things. Then JMMB now comes and says, okay, I'm doing it with love. And when you go into the brand, you actually feel love sometimes, but you feel love. You know what I mean? So it's very important that that companies and businesses regard. don't think about as Janine said don't think about how small you are that's relevant once you put yourself out there in terms of producing a product or a service consider the brand behind it and how you want others to perceive you um Cleopatra Bihari St. Mihari says, I finally have an appreciation for the term artificial persons, person. Many thanks, Janine. She wants to know how she may contact you. Um, you can contact us at, send us an email, info at jbdc.net. Once the email gets here, we will direct it to the relevant person. Or you can call our landline, 876-928-5161 to five. All right. Um, Sidonis Sinclair, great presentation, Janine. However, is there any regulatory or government agency we have to go through to launch a brand? No, no. All it's right. really about the intellectual property and the marks. Now, that's that again, we make the distinction between the logo and the what we call the brand. So the logo is a physical representation of the brand. It may have a particular design and color. Those you have to register them because mm -hmm. you do, you would hate to know invest in a strategy and be a winning strategy and not have it protected. 
Right. And I mean, even in, in a recent thing, um, session I was in, how serious this is when it comes on to businesses now, when you are creating your brands, you right away secure your domain names and you secure your digital footprint marks. Even if you're not on social media, you create your Instagram account, your Facebook account and everything. Because once you start implementing the strategy, people are going to become aware of you. And once they become aware of you in the digital space, they, they want to know bargain to sell you these domain names. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen is that you create the brand as a, a shoe company. You create the brand for shoes. But you may want, when we talk about having the vision, you may want to go into full apparel over time. You don't want to now have to be struggling to get it in that category. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, sh the short answer is no, but there's a longer answer that says, yes, there is a certain legal framework around branding, but it's not in relation to brand strategy. It may become a part of the strategy. As you say, my vision is to go here, there, and everywhere and go into this, that, that, and that. And that will kind of guide you on how to register it and how to protect it and stuff like that. But it starts by knowing the strategy. And so we wanted persons to pay attention to their brands and what they want to do with the brands because over time, that's, that's a very powerful tool. And so, yes, there is a legal aspect, but not what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Bev Gordon is asking, how can you get customers to understand your brand is linked to a particular niche in a market? For instance, if you are offering a particular product, but customers keep asking you for other items? Okay. So when we say customers, we would be talking about the the are we talking about the catch net of the market? Because if it is your consumers, you know, they would be targeted. Mm -hmm. And so by targeting them, and we came up with a persona. So we describe them, create a fictitious um, description of them, the makeup. Then you would create your communication strategy now to attract them. So by the way you look, the way you add, where you do the ad, where you go, where you place the product, the kind of retail store you put the product in, all of that would be influenced by that strategy. Mm -hmm. So if you are finding yourself in the catch net of the market, then you are in the wrong way. That's the first thing. You hear that, Bev? However, if you are in the correct place, so the, the, the consumer matches who you want to target, and they are saying it's not that they want, then you need to pay attention to the feedback. Yeah. So it's two things. You're either in the wrong where and attracting the wrong who or your what is wrong. Yeah. So it, it, it therefore means, um, Bev, that you probably need to go back to the, the drawing board because your who has to be right. And your once your who is right, your where is, will, be, will fall into place. Niche markets are very, very specific, yeah. very small, very specific, and are easily clustered. So yeah. it means that your strategy can be more defined. It's actually something that we encourage for small firms to look at niche markets. But it sometimes means that because it's a niche market and it's because it's a small group, then you have to now come up with specific strategies to talk to those persons. So you have to really understand them. And if it's a different type of persons coming, it means that your messaging and the way you're positioned is mm -hmm. out of alignment with what you want as a vision. All right. So, All right. so she's, she, she wants to be a little bit more specific. My company's name is Pretty Little Bags. And I, I handcraft designer crochet bags. But because it's crochet, they think you are just to make any crochet item. So her product is bags. But it's like people keep coming and asking her maybe for runners or scarves or something. I would say that's maybe an that's an opportunity. Of yeah. course. That's an opportunity. So Beverly, we talk about the listening to the feedback. No, that can work. It can be. It can work to your detriment if you don't listen. 
because we spoke earlier about listening to the feedback. And what is happening is that they are impressed with the bags. Yeah. But there are two things they can do. Either you are going to communicate that you are not capable of doing that. That's not something you are able to do. I'm fine with that as a customer. Or you look at doing product development because you would have now been given insight to what other things they would be willing to buy from you. Now, you don't have to be the person to make it. You may now be able to team up with other persons that's having a shared value, the shared quality system, and a shared um, approach, and team up with them and supply your customers with what they want. Yeah, Bev, I mean, there are so many things bubbling in my head based on this question that you just asked. You, This is an opportunity, I think, to expand the business, expand the line. The bags can be one line. Scarves can be another. Whatever else it is that you're being asked for can also be another. And then that is how you now move your brand along the development, um, the, 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 what you call it, the product development line. So, I mean, think about it. Don't be offended by it. Think about it and see if you know, there's anything that you can, can do about it. Go ahead, Janine. There was a comment earlier up from um, Natricia that spoke about the, the complete image. And um, when we were talking about brand ambassadors, the, the point that was being made is that Grace Kennedy typically uses families to um, communicate. It's not really, it's a part of their brand strategy, but there is a reason why they use family. And, and the reason for that is it comes back to the values and what the brand stands for. And because the brand stands for the good food people, and these are household items being used by families all over, that is the reason why the physical manifestation in their advertisements and so on demonstrate a family setting. So it's not starting with family, it's starting with strategy. It's starting mm. with the strategy that they are the good food people, that they are targeting homes, they want their products to be household names, and they want the families to use it at all different, with doing all different things. So therefore their communication strategy now evokes that mm -hmm. emotion. It's very deliberate. So it's, it's really about coming back to the values and the purpose and the intention, the benefits, and then creating a communication strategy now to, to be able to translate that to the market that you're trying to attract. Mm. And um, look at your brand ambassadors, who you use now to communicate that, and if they, if they embody the message that you're trying to send. All right, question from Dwayne Stevens. Are there any differences in approach toward building a brand for services versus products? Yes. Depending on your brand and what the business was created to do, the purpose, depending on the, the first thing we spoke about was purpose. It should influence the, the products that you create. So that when you create the products, and it's attaching this brand to the products, there's a meaning behind it. So the products typically focus on the features of the product, the, the physical benefit, or, or the for services, the benefits, mm -hmm. benefits to use in the product. But the brand focuses on why yours. Mm -hmm. Because anybody can satisfy that, that uh, problem and they can come up with other product solutions to satisfy those benefits. But the brand now speaks to why I must buy yours, which is the purpose of the thing. So it's, it's more the emotions, while the product tends to be more function, it's more mm. a functional thing. While the, the, the brand speaks to the emotion, the, per, the relationship, the identity. Hopefully that um, it answers. All right, he has a follow-up question. Uh, also, if I have an e-commerce business selling different products, what are some differentiation strategies that can be employed to bo boost my brand? It's how the brand is going to boost your differentiation strategy. Because the brand was established with a particular goal. 
when you build the e-commerce platform, it must be evident mm -hmm. what you're trying to communicate, not so much what you're selling, you know. So when you go in there, what 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 is this? What is this um, e-commerce site about? What do you stand for? Because mm -hmm. I can't go on any site and buy clothes, you know. Mm -hmm. But why buy yours? Right? Why buy Banana Public? Why buy Gap? Why buy Nike? There's something that the brand is saying about the reason why its existence is in the world. That's going to make persons come and buy your thing. So when you start creating a website now, mm -hmm. it must physically manifest what the brand is saying. The way the products look. If you are saying that the brand is a luxury brand, that the clothes must match it. The things on the website must match it. If you are saying you are there to... To, to make your home warm and fuzzy, then the selection of items must speak to that. So depending on what you stand for with the brand, that's how you now create the story in the products and the way the thing look and all of that. So it's 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 the value proposition of the brand. Mm -hmm. it, it's what the brand stands for and how is that communicating with the target market. And so that's why you have to be clear on the target market because if you do a catch all, then you won't. You, you, it's, it's like trying to be friends with everybody. Yeah. And this one, like when you're quiet, and that one, like when you're loud, and you go around the quiet one loud, and them say, shh. And you, you know, it's, that's basically the, the, the scenario that will happen right. if you're not focused. Right. All right. Neveline Williamson, the presentation was very informative. I'm a recent graduate who is interested in becoming a brand strategist. I will be grateful for any career advice in this field. I would say the, 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 the kind of personality that does well with brand strategy are the kinds of persons who understand the psychology of the consumer. They have to be very in tune with people and behavior and what um, motivates, what's the psychological motivation behind a consumer stepping out and, and going for something, right? So it's, you have to like people. Yeah. You have to want to understand people. You want to study them. You want to get into their minds. You want to get into their emotions and still maintain integrity and ethics because your strategy now must not be seeking to manipulate uh, sort of but not you know what i mean there's a very thin line where ethics is concerned and it can go really bad mm. if it's being used inappropriately right um all right so i have a question would you say emotion helps to build brand loyalty, Janine, from a from the from the business perspective? Because if a if a customer if or a consumer is emotionally attached to your products, wouldn't you say it helps to build brand loyalty? When we when we went to the first slide, I spoke about four reasons why we developed strategy mm -hmm. and one of them was emotion. emotion yes and what we say is that branding creates a bond between the brand and the consumer that builds emotional ties for loyalty that's mm -hmm. what we said so it means that when i'm developing the strategy it's like trying to entreat somebody to fall in love with me or something you know it's it's what do they like and then I'm going to do the things that they like mm -hmm. because it creates a positive emotion from them and it connects you. So the emotions is key. It's really one of four. So you have emotions, you have differentiation, you have to add value and to communicate. Those are the four main reasons why you develop brand strategy. Okay, great. All right. Thank you so much, Janine. Um, I wanted to also remind person of the eight. I have eight ingredients to a winning strategy. Can you remind me what the other two eights were? Because I, I... Eight um, cultural elements that right. influence the strategy. And eight next steps. 
Right. All right. Fabulous. Thank you so much for having come and shared with us this morning, Janine. The presentation was certainly informative, educational, mm -hmm. interesting. It was just so many things. Um, I want to encourage persons who want to grab a to, to, to view this again, it will be available on our YouTube channel by about, today is Tuesday, I would say by about Friday, you should be able to access this on our YouTube channel. You can feel free to share it with your friends, just subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as the, the, the presentation is uploaded. We also want to remind you that our offices across the island remain open. You can contact us via phone 876-928-5161 and it goes up to five. You can also send us an email at info at jbdc.net and we would be more than happy to respond to any questions that you have. If you need support developing your brand strategy, any stage you are at the in the development of your business, feel free to make contact with us. And of course, we would be more than happy to support you in the process. Again, we want to thank you for having joined us this morning. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your participation. And we look forward to seeing you again at one o'clock when we will be talking about affordable gifting ideas for Christmas. You know, this year in particular, we're gonna need those affordable gifting ideas because this year has been particularly slow for some persons where finances are concerned. For others, it has been a great year. They've boomed in their business, but still, we will still need some affordable um, gifting ideas. So if you have not registered as yet, you can register. Registration for the one o'clock session is still open. Go ahead and register and I will see you at one, one o'clock. Thank you again for joining us and have a great rest of the day.